Hey everyone, Stephen Hack here with Career Watch, where we help you with your career search. Today we are talking with Tessa from the Tessa K YouTube channel. Tessa is a registered sonographer, and we're just gonna ask her a bunch of questions about that occupation. So here is the interview. Hi everyone, uh, Stephen Hack here, and I have Tessa K here, who is a registered sonographer. Uh, today we're going to go over the realities versus expectations of sonog becoming a sonographer, being a sonographer, and what it's like. So here's Tessa. Um, can you tell us about your channel a little bit? So my channel is based off of ultrasound, but I do also do lifestyle and vlogs as well. And I am a registered sonographer specializing in abdomen and OBGYN. I do have my bachelor's in health science and a, an associate's in diagnostic medical sonography. Okay. Did you go from like, so you initially got your associates and then you transitioned and got a bachelor's or how, how did that work? So actually I got my bachelor's first. Oh, okay. I got my bachelor's in health science at Cal State Dominguez Hills. And um, then I went back to school for ultrasound. So it was kind of switch over. Okay. What was your motivation of getting into this occupation? Um, were you like torn about going into this versus other occupations? Um, what drew you to become a sonographer? So what, motiva what motivated me to become a sonographer was the patient interaction. After I graduated with my bachelor's, I got a job in a medical office. And it was one of those typical jobs where you come in and you're in this cubicle. So I just didn't like how I wanted to to be, um, be in the medical field, but I wasn't really dealing with the patients. And that's what I really wanted um, from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And um, how um, ultrasound came about was, it was my last year of my getting my bachelor's. My friend actually went into ultrasound school and she brought it up. But mm -hmm. since it was my last year of my bachelor's, I didn't want to switch paths. So I just went ahead and graduated with health science. And yeah, so that's that. Gotcha. Yeah. Like, um, yeah, I think a lot of people get to that, the end of their bachelor's degree and they're like, Oh, what do I want to do? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it's very, ch very challenging time period for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Um, so you've been, how long you've been working as a sonographer, like a couple of years? So, so I'm still very or, green. Still very um, green. Yep. it's only been a year. Gotcha. Yeah. I graduated last year in October. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So what's your favorite thing so far about? It? Is it the patient interaction, like kind of like what you were talking about earlier? So my favorite thing about being a sonographer is being part of the diagnosing process. And I work where I work, um, I work really close with the doctor. So I'm learning every day. And also um, my patients are always different. I like meeting new people and yeah. Um, and also being part of the diagnosing process, um, my job is to help prevent further issues for the patients. Mm -hmm. So I just like being part of that process. So you like, so you work with a lot of OBGYNs, I guess, mm -hmm. exclusively with OG. Is there any other doctors that you work with? Just most, yes. I guess. Yeah, so I work in a doctor's office. So I'm working with one doctor. Okay. And, um, all of our patients are referred to us. So um, they want his expertise. So um, yeah, I work really close with him. Cool. Cool. So like kind of like a private practice. Yeah. 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 Okay. So what is your, what is your least favorite thing about being a, a sonographer so far? Up so to my least, point? my least favorite thing is um, not being able to tell the patient what I see. Sometimes I get a lot of patients coming out and they'll ask me, so what do you think? What do you see? And sometimes they do have a pathology that I'm measuring and documenting, but it's just can't really tell them what I see because since I'm not the doctor, Mm -hmm. can't really tell you my opinions because I mean, I'm just the tech taking the images. So yeah. Right. Cause they're super concerned about the health of the yeah. baby and they're wondering mm -hmm. if it has down syndrome or yeah. autism or some kind of genetic yeah. thing going on. And mm -hmm. yeah, that's, and you want to share that kind of information, potential yeah. information with mm -hmm. patients. And the good thing about um, ultrasound is not just babies. Um, we, we see a lot of, like, we look at the liver, the, um, the organs and everything, the thyroid. So there's, like, mass uh, fluids, like, all in the, in the body. So, mm -hmm. yeah. But, yeah, sometimes when, um, the patients come in all nervous, and they just want the results right away. So in our office, we try to get the results to their doctor as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. And they usually get it by the next day. So do a lot of people in this occupation, do they focus? Like, do some focus on babies and others focus on like 
you know, like you were talking about livers, like you're looking for cancer or? Um, it could be like um, benign masses and then there's like malignant masses. Then there's like buildup fluid, um, inflammation. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there's all sorts of stuff. But um, when you graduate from a program, you either get your special, um, you specialize in either abdomen or OBGYN to get registered. Okay. Um, and those are technically general practice. And then you can go either uh, specialize even further into vascular, um, pediatrics, echo. You can, you can get more. But um, usually when you are registered in either OBGYN or um, abdomen, you scan like everything um, that, that deals with the abdomen and OBGYN. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So, uh, what school did you go to? Was it challenging? Was it expensive? Um, I guess, well, you, you, you got your associates after your bachelor's degree. Mm -hmm. Um, I guess, where did you get your associates from? So I got my associates at CBD college in LA. It's in okay. Koreatown. And I went to that school because, um, that's the only school that's accredited in my area. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of times when people ask me, like, um, there's, um, what school should I go to? They're not accredited by KHEP. Mm -hmm. And I really suggest you go to a school that's accredited by KHEP because um, KHEP is like the standard um, education that employers look for. So they mm -hmm. want you to go to school that has that accredit accreditation. Now, there is um, ultrasound programs that have accreditation. And um, I wouldn't suggest going to those because it'll just be a lot harder for you to get a job after you graduate. Right. I, I, I would think that, um, yeah, employ, uh, employers would be required to hire people that are, go to an accredited program, but mm -hmm. maybe that's yeah. not the case. I don't know. Maybe you have yeah. some random doctor's offices where it's like the niece or nephew, uh, who knows, who knows? <laughs> um, <laughs> was it pretty expensive going through this program or not, not too? Yeah, it was, it was expensive and I'm not, I'm not scared to say how much it was. It was about 40 K. Like per um, year or total? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Total? Okay. Um, Two-year program on um, 40K. Okay. It is a private school. Mm -hmm. I think that's why it costed a lot. Um, you can go the community college route, but usually that is a waiting period. It's a lot cheaper, but um, the community college that I was looking at, it was going to be a four-year wait, and wow. I wanted to get it done. So, so is yeah. this like, do a lot of people, are a lot of people trying to go into this occupation, is it pretty competitive? Or yes, it's, it's very, very competitive. Um, the school I went to only takes about 30, 30 students um, wow. a year. Mm -hmm. And um, there's some schools that only take like 15 or 12. Mm -hmm. Yeah, That mm -hmm. makes sense. I mean, it's people working in this occupation seem to be, make pretty good money. Um, so I can see mm -hmm. why a lot of people would be attracted to it. Yeah. Um, do, are you allowed to do overtime or is it kind of like nurses where there's like time and a half where you can make... Or, or not really. Um, so for uh, for ultrasound techs, we're known to do, to be on call. Mm -hmm. So you can be on call for a twelve hour shift. So you can go home and like wait to get called in. And um, every pay is different. They either pay you by the hour or they pay you when they call you in. Mm -hmm. uh, I've actually done a like on call shift. Didn't really like it because I got called in like at eleven p.m. <laughs> at night, and I was just like, yeah, it's oh, that's terrible. Party. Yeah. So, um, and that one, they paid me for, um, by the hour. So gotcha. I would go in and they got paid by that. And then, um, when I was done with the exam, I would go home and if they called you, if you make it home and they called you by within that hour, you don't get paid because you already got paid for the hour. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. It's so many, um, healthcare occupations they have that where like you have to be on call and Mm -hmm. You used to have like a paid in all the TV shows, you'd have like a pager. I'm sure that's different now. You just get called on your cell phone. Yeah. Or, yeah. yeah. Interesting. So yeah, it sounds like for the most, other than the on-call thing, there's a pretty good work-life balance, right? Like, yeah, it's like eight to five I, most days probably. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's very flexible. Now, um, if you're like single and you don't have like a family or anything like that, you can work as much as you want. You can get like more than one um, per diem job. Mm -hmm. A per diem is basically um, they hire you when they need you. So a certain time and days you come in. So you get multiple jobs like, um, like that. You do part-time or you can do like full-time. You can work in a hospital or like outpatient or even travel. So Cool. Very, very, very flexible. It's, it depends on what you want to do. Mm -hmm. 
Interesting. Interesting. Well, that's all the questions I have so far. Um, yeah, thanks so much for meeting with me. Uh, th again, this is Tessa Kay. Feel free, I'm going to link her YouTube channel below, both in <laughs> yeah. the description and the, I'll put in the first comment. But uh, thank you so much for meeting with me today, Tessa. Great. Thank you for so much for having me, Stephen. Tessa also wanted everyone to know that the reputation of the school matters. This is a competitive occupation, so definitely do your research before jumping into and spending thousands of dollars on a diagnostic medical sonography program. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. Thanks again, and I will see you in the next video.